Hello there, I am Richie Stormtrooper. Welcome to the channel. We are building a complete Stormtrooper armor and we are continuing today. We are going to be looking at assembling the thighs. If you do find this video interesting or useful, please do like and subscribe. As I say, we are going to be completing a full Stormtrooper build. In this video, we're looking at the thighs, but we have a whole series of videos dedicated to all the parts telling you exactly how to assemble and make your own Stormtrooper costume. These parts are some of my favorite parts of all. And as you can see on the RS Props kit, we have quite a lot of leeway to vary the fit of these. We have quite a lot of allowance on the moulds at the back which is the most interesting part but also at the front but we've got a lot of, lot of trimming to do so let's get started with that. Unlike some of the limb parts, the thigh parts are parts which um, certainly have some return edge on all openings when it comes to the openings. So at the top and the bottom we want some return edge. I remind you at this stage as ever Call up your own references, look at a reference of the references of original armor parts and copy those. Do not copy me exactly, do not make the mistake of copying other people. If you are unsure as to where to get references from, visit the forum at fir the First Imperial Stormtrooper Detachment Forum, which is affiliated with the 501st Legion. I will add a link down below. That's where I get all my original references from. We have some great photos of suits from the archives, from Lucasfilm archives, and of course, screenshots from the original movies. Those should be your first references. Photos of the original suit, the RS Propmaster suit, Simon's suit, have shown us that, particularly here around the knee opening, it was extremely untidy. You can make this as tidy or as untidy as you like. Um, also, you see here, there is a, a kind of an angled edge here and various angles in the sculpt. The trimming was largely rounded. It didn't necessarily follow the exact line of the armour itself. And at the top, we had some return edge. As you can see, there's a lot of material on the mould, but we're going to reduce that down to, I think it's less than half a centimetre all along, it's just a little bit of extra material that makes it look like a chunkier set of armour. Again, there's no real need to be absolutely neat and accurate. So here I have all the four thigh parts trimmed. As you can see, the openings are trimmed. This is the type of return edge I have at the top and at the bottom as you can see it's more of a round rough and ready shape. I don't follow faithfully the angles of the sculpt itself. This is very authentic so if your cut lines are looking varied and wavy don't worry about it. It is absolutely authentic obviously if you want to go more idealized and you want that nice and neat take all the time you want. Use your Dremel if you prefer a Dremel. I'm using my craft scissors, my plastic cutting craft scissors. And now we're ready to trim the fronts and the backs and fit them to our legs. First of all, with all the limbs parts which we have with a raised ridge, all the limbs parts with the exception of the biceps, if you want to look at assembling the biceps and the peculiarities of that part, click the link here. Here's a video dedicated to the biceps. But all other limbs parts have a raised edge, which will be the front part for the cover strip. We also already have our cover strips pre-cut, ready to assemble the parts. If you want to see a video all about cover strips, more detailed information on cover strips, click here. This raised ridge then, where our cover strip will be fitted. As you can see on these moulds, we have quite a lot of allowance. We're going to have to reduce that. So we're going to have to reduce this ridge to something big enough to house this strip. So just a bit wider than 20, something between maybe 22 and 25 millimeters. It's not that exact science, but what I start off doing is marking on one side maybe 
12, 13 millimeters. And I just want to mark in pencil roughly where I'm going to trim that to. So 12 or 13 millimeters. So we're going to have something a little wider than our cover strip at the end. This first cut does not have to be neat. It can be, it can be wavy. It can be just as long as it's roughly straight and it keeps the same distance roughly from your edge. So 12 or 13 millimeters in this case, it's fine. What we do though want to do is make sure that when we trim the other side, that the line matches. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I'm just trimming that out with my craft scissors, my plastic craft scissors. And there we have one side ready for assembly. So to make sure, once we have cut one side, that it's going to match with the other side, what we're going to want to do is lay it over the top and use that to mark our cut line on the other side. We could, in theory, use the front to vary the size of our parts, the, the circumference of our parts for fitting smaller or larger body parts, but it's not going to look right. We need to get that trimmed to so around 25 millimeters to take to take our strip, our fit covering cover strip, and align up properly at the front, and then we'll use the back for the sizing. And then I want to mark roughly on this other side my 12 or 13 millimeters. So I'm even eyeballing this, just comparing it to my original reference on the screen. And it's somewhere around there. And that is indeed something like 13 millimeters. And I just want to mark at various stages roughly 13 millimeters. So when I come to placing the other part over the top there, I don't go too narrow or too wide, matching it up, something like that. Now, this is very interesting. This is, of course, the right-hand thigh assembly. The parts we want to align here are the highest points of this bottom ridge, this detailing that goes all the way around, this raised detail. You will notice quickly that if we match the bottom, the top doesn't match. What we want to do is match that top and we will find that we have some excess here. This hangs down. The top will, will match roughly. The very top of the armour, this when we've trimmed out this, this extra pointy bit, this will, this curve will match and we'll have a strange protrusion at the bottom. Don't worry about that. That's perfectly normal. And it's also covered up when we finally assemble all the accessory parts. There is a an ammunition belt that goes over the top of there, which was probably added because of this problem. It's probably um, a mismatch in the moulds that, that was discovered when the parts were made and it looks a little bit unsightly, so the parts, I, I presume, the parts that cover that were made afterwards. I've placed some magnets in the middle, that's the, the tricky, tricky area. A clamp at the top, some magnets in the middle, that kind of helps me hold it all in place. Making sure this is lined up here at the bottom, and I have my little protrusion there. And I think I'm ready to mark it on. So I have my part taped at the front, aligned as I'm going to be gluing it, welding it, and I can then focus on the back <coughs> and getting this to the right shape and the right size for me. And then it's time to start looking at original references again. What I like to do with all parts is match them exactly to the shape, eyeball it, there's no real measurements, so I just call up my references and match the shape to an original part. So I get it just like an original right from the start. And then I can look at actually fitting it to my size. On this right hand thigh assembly from the RS Props kit, 
it's pretty much predetermined on the right right hand side as we wear it the outer part where our cut is going to be we'll see here have the front and the side and the back section of this after the last angled part there there's a very distinct ridge which is pretty much going to be where we're going to have to cut that outer part and that's going to be determine our line on that side and then we have this side with all the extra material for fitting there is also a kind of a bobble here at the top which seems to suggest that that's the original line of the part and that this is excess material if you want exact measurements um, how it was on the original suit and you are a customer of RS Prop Masters I'm sure if you drop them a line or even check out their videos they've done some tutorial videos that are very useful also on their YouTube channel um, drop them a line and they can tell you the exact measurements I'm doing this eyeballing it to original references and fitting it to my legs so I'm not necessarily replicating exactly their suit I've now cut that one side roughly and then I have something that I can overlap over the other side to then set to the girth that I need. I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is match that to parts that I know are too tight for me, too narrow for me on, on my references and then get the taper right so get the overall shape right by doing so and then bit by bit keep trying it on um, I'm not going to be trying it on in my trousers, my jogging bottoms. Uh, you'll want to put your undersuit on or just do this in your pants. I'm going to save you the, uh, spare you the sight of me in my pants. Um, but I will be fitting that with either my undersuit or just my bare legs. Now I have my pencil mark, my cut line marked in pencil, where I'm reasonably confident it's going to be, but I've got it all taped up just for one last check this is a really fiddly job you see it's very difficult you need a lot of pressure and there's a lot of tension on these parts it's difficult to hold them in place be patient and whatever you do make sure you check and check again double check triple check don't make the mistake that I once made of making the thighs too tight it's very 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 uncomfortable if these are too close fitting the thigh assembly for the left leg is perhaps a little bit less complicated in that the bottom matches fine, you match up the ridge, you match up the very bottom and the top, it all seems to match fine. The process is of course the same, I've cut my one side to place over the other side, leaving a ridge something like 25 millimeters. I have one reference where it's quite clearly a little bit more at the top but others will have been more uniform but the process with the left hand thigh assembly is obviously the same what you do want to bear in mind on the left hand side is that the bottom part of this thigh assembly is going to be visible on the armour externally once we're finished so we want to make sure that we trim these two sides to marry absolutely as perfectly as we can so there's no gap that's achieved as I've shown you in other videos and in this video also by overlapping the parts as you want to fit them and marking in pencil the cut line on the opposite marrying side and that now is going to be a nice flush fit okay so I now have two full fight assemblies with my cover strips cut to length and these are all ready to assemble I've tried them out I've fitted them I've lined lined up the front and now all that remains to be done is for me to clamp these up with my magnets and my clamps and weld them together with a trusty plastic weld now I won't go into detail about the welding process or the gluing process in this video I do go into more depth about it in the video 
on assembling the biceps as that was the first parts that we assembled, the first limb parts we assembled. Click on here for a link to the full list of tutorials for the Stormtrooper build and look for the biceps tutorial and you will find more information. And here I have my left thigh assembly fully assembled. I'm just taking off my protective tape that I use on the outside of the cover strip. Just need to finish off the right hand side now and otherwise that's the process for our thighs. I'll get the action cam out to show you some of the insides where I did in fact use extra tabs. I mentioned this in the biceps part. Here you can see an extra piece of... set that down. So in two positions inside the armor itself I have used some extra scrap material as a tab. This is just because the backs of these, you can see that's just inside the top, just in, inside there, just inside the top, just a piece of material across there to temporarily hold that in place and I've also done that at the bottom at the back here you can see it this little cross piece of plastic that's just super glued in that's just glued in here whilst I position the cover strip because I find this part at the back really needs a lot of tension you need to apply a lot of force the parts naturally want to open at the back more to a point and we're really trying to force them to get round it's just a peculiarity of the rs prop masters kit it takes quite a lot of patience lots of fiddling about and i found that in this case these little tabs one at the top one at the bottom really did help by all means don't be scared if you're finding you're having trouble clamping things in place provisionally even put a, a complete strip of scrap material inside the seam like that or at the back glue it in first get it assembled on the outside before you commit to putting on the cover strip i have reasonable amount of experience with these so i know i can get the support i need with just a couple of tabs in there and that's my finished left thigh if you found this video useful or interesting, please do like and subscribe. As I say, this is only one tutorial in part of a full Stormtrooper armor build. If you have stumbled across this video and you want to go back to the start, there is a full playlist. Check out my channel and look for the playlist Stormtrooper armor build. Like and subscribe and then you won't miss any of the future videos. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.